Hey everybody, welcome back to Shock and Schlock. I am very excited today because I just finished watching a film that not many of you probably know even exists, and one that I am so excited to talk about. We've we've been leaving up to this moment. I've got the Psychowave shirt on, but this is the B Boomy. Should be wearing the Squirmfest shirt because what do we have? Let's see. I can cut. Yeah, this should be fine to show. As long as I cover the nudity. You might say, what is that? There are worms on that woman. Can you read the disc? Does that say what I think it says? Could it be that there is a third film in the Squirmfest series? Yes. I have to walk because I'm so excited to talk about this right now. Um, Squirmfest 3. I got it. After a long time of searching, after hearing about it, I managed to track down a copy of it from a friend of mine on Instagram who I did a film trade with to get a copy of this. Um... And there is a little bit of misinformation and odd stuff surrounding what Squirmfest really is a part of, or if Squirmfest even exists um, as that title. So let's start out with that. Um, I have seen all three of these now. Uh, Squirmfest 1 was actually... Well, what we in America and outside of Japan, um, UK, Australia, you know, everybody outside of Japan. What we all know as Squirmfest is actually part one of a series called Purge. Um, Purge 1 is Squirmfest 1 here. Purge 1 in Japan is Squirmfest 1 here. But there is also a series referred to in Japan as Squirmfest. Now, Squirmfest 1 in Japan is what we refer to as Squirmfest 2 here. So it goes Purge, Squirmfest 1 for Japan. This is what the films would be. And then this is Squirmfest 2 in Japan. But for us, it is Squirmfest 3. Um, it's referred to as Squirmfest 3, and at this point it really doesn't matter what the actual title is to most people, including myself, um, to collectors, bootleggers, everybody out there. Um, this is what we refer to as Squirmfest 3. Now, I just finished this one. Now, what sets Squirmfest 3 apart from the other two? What could they do at this point? Well, the romantic storyline of the second film is once again carried over to this one. Not with the same characters, but that whole subgenre or subplot of the romance between the leads carries over. This time it is between two women. And, um, yeah, it's less wholesome than the second one, which is something that I brought up a lot about the second film. This one, it's much more tragic and almost mean spirited. If Squirmfest 2 is a romantic comedy, this one is a breakup movie. Um,. Once again, like the second film, this film is shot much more artistically, but it leans even further into that this time. Um, with this being a direct follow-up to Squirmfest 2, um, no matter what you call it, this is the direct follow-up to that. Um, so we can talk about those two, at least in comparison. Um, this one definitely is more mean-spirited. I'll say that. Um, it's darker. It's grimier. Um, I don't know if I would say it's as gross as the second film. There are parts that I would say are, but for the most part, if you've seen the first two or you've seen other stuff like Terrible Meal and everything, there's not a ton in this that it is going to surprise you. Um, nothing on the same level as like Goose and Milk or anything like that. Still pretty gross, but the thing that sets this one apart is that there is a lot of artistic shots in this one. 
and there is a defined plot. Um, I would say almost 20 to 30 minutes of this film is purely plot with no sexual content whatsoever. Um, but yeah, it's... The parts where there is sexual content, everything revolving that, it, it plays this weird, hellish, altered circus music during a lot of it that's bizarre and freaky and it is legitimately creepy. Um, this one is much more in the vein of like horror movie, Asian fetish films like uh, GSKD has almost a similar tone um, as this one. It's very dark, very edgy, um, mean-spirited, and it has like a weird melancholic sadness to the entire thing as well. Um, you still get the gross-out stuff here, um, but I mean, I've talked about that so much in the first two films, so I mean, at this point, what else can we say about it? There's nothing that's out of the ordinary versus the other two for being disgusting. I still think the first one is about the grossest you're going to get. Um, just like the second one in this, there's less bugs um, in this one. There's some... Um, the scene that involves bugs is a bit longer in the second one, and it's a bit grosser. Um, there's a lot of scenes filmed in the dark in this one. Not The lighting is bad, but it's filmed like in a dark room, um, and it kind of makes everything a little bit creepy. Um, the two leads, both of them are really charismatic. Um, yeah. Um, these types of fetish films and everything like that, you sort of have to actually discuss the acting prowess of some of the people in these um, when it's worth noting. In this one, there is definitely a plot. Um, there's definitely something more to this than just the gross-out scenes. And I think that the two leads have chemistry, um, which was good to see. Um, the first girl being a bit more submissive character-wise. <coughs> And the second being more of a, like, punk rock, aggressive, edgy girl that's kind of pulling her into things. But the first one has, like, the dark secret side. It's it's very weird. Um, <coughs> I will say, I'm not going to want to eat noodles for a long time after watching this. Uh, if you do watch this, um, you'll know what I mean. And, yeah, um, I'm going to stop doing numbers in these reviews, guys, because I've been giving a lot of fives out, and I just want to talk about the likes and dislikes on this, because, you know, everything is so subjective anyway. Um, what do I like about this? The music, super creepy. Um, the tone-wise was a big shift in this one, which I think actually paid off quite well. Um, the gross-out scenes are there, nothing too crazy, so that's not really a dislike, but it's worth mentioning that if you're looking for something that tops the second one, you're not really going to find that too much here. Um, yeah, I like the chemistry between the leads, I like the performances in this, um, the artistic nature is definitely appreciated. Um, yeah, for fans of the first two, this is definitely worth seeking out if you can find it. Um, I am going to potentially be putting this out um under my banana box releasing in a trilogy with the first two films as well i'm still a bit on the fence with that if you th would buy something like that or if you were interested please let me know um i just want to get an idea of how many of them i would make if people want them um i know what pricing would be i try to keep the pricing on these reasonable uh, i just want these to be a fun thing um all the money from everything goes back into the project um like from the first mixtapes that i made um, my sales from that, uh, you can actually see it right here. I have it right now. Um, it went into buying this Blu-ray burner. All of the profits went directly into that, which goes back to the project to burn new stuff, get new material, um, everything like that. So, yeah, um, new shirt designs, new merch ideas, everything like that is comes directly from what I make from these. So, um, pretty excited about potential stuff like that. Squirmfest, of course, this feels like a cap on a moment, not in my life necessarily, um, but definitely in like my channel because Squirmfest is sort of what started me on these dark fetish movies, um, reviewing them, watching them, making merch and stuff. And there's always going to be a place in my heart for them. Um, 
always been a fan of gross out cinema with stuff like John Waters, always searched out for stuff that sort of had that loose punk rock nasty tone and fetish films sort of scratched that itch for me um, in some cases. I mean, you know, just like regular adult films, there's ones that are not worth talking about that are just silly, uninteresting, unimaginative, uninspired. Oh, oh I'm sorry, I guess. Um, yeah, I just... Some of them are worth watching, though. Squirmfest 1 through 3, the trilogy has artistic value, and I highly recommend checking them out. Um, thank you to Mr. Paul Hayes for giving me this bootleg copy. Um, like I said, though, every release of Squirmfest outside of Japan is going to be a bootleg. There's never been an official release of any of them outside of Japan. Um... But bootlegs of certain ones are definitely hard to come by. This is a difficult to find bootleg. Um, I do have original or rare bootlegs of the first two, as well as Terrible Neil, um, stuff like that as well. But for those searching, um, if you know any Japanese adult film websites that sell this type of thing, I use Asian screens um, for some of this. I can't use it for stuff like this. But for PTJ and stuff like that, you can definitely find it on there. Um, search just by the barcode, though. So for people that are wanting to search for this, I'm not going to leave a link because I got the strike on my channel. Good news, those guys. I did get overturned. The strike was removed. Um, I was It came after I was had my week ban, but it did get removed. So that was nice. Um, but SAS017... Um, if you look up SAS017, you can probably find this online somewhere if you search hard enough. Um, may not be the best quality. And what I see a lot of the time when you search for Squirmfest specifically is a lot of the sites that you'll find them on will either be missing the first 15 minutes or will skip around or just have clips from it. You're never going to find the full thing. Um, if you want a copy of Squirmfest 1 and 2, though, um, and you want the best release... Hit up um, Mr. Horse at Dead Format Films or um, DB Soul Greasy at Greasy Cinema. Um, either of those guys can probably make you a copy of that. Um, a Corpse Collector too, um, Mr. Kita, a good friend of mine, is also selling Squirmfest 1 on Instagram and Reddit. Um, his Reddit username is Patterns in the Ivy. Um, yeah, if you message either of those guys, they will help you out there. And... Yeah, that's about it, guys. Um, let me know, though, if you're watching this point in the video, let me know if you would get a trilogy on um, Blu-ray or be interested in something like that under the Banana Box label. Um, yeah, still on the fence about it. Um, working on a couple of new releases from that that are coming in the future that I'm excited about as well. Uh, more reviews coming this week. Tomorrow is going to be my review of Crimes of the Future. I was going to do that today, but Squirmfest 3, of course, I had to cover that first. So, Crimes of the Future review tomorrow. Um, Sunday, not sure what I'm going to have yet. Um, yeah. This week, though, new video every day. Um, hopefully going to have some announcements this week. Just got back from vacation this week, guys, so it's been a lot. I started a new job as well. So if you're watching this point in the video and you're one of those people that are watching my videos all the way through, thank you, number one. Um, if you haven't subscribed, remember to subscribe. Keep the bell notifications on um, as well. And thank you for sticking with me. I know that sometimes I say that I'm going to have announcements and stuff and they don't come. It's just because, you know, I'm a one-man show. I have a lot of projects going on, and, yeah, it just gets hard sometimes. And, yeah, if you want any copies of Totally Twatted 2, How to Raise a Pet Girl, Totally Twatted 1, no more limited edition copies of Totally Twatted 1, no bonus disc with any of them anymore, but I'm still selling them. I'll make them for you. It won't be numbered out of 10. I'll just have my initials on there. Um, if you want any of those mixtapes, I still have some copies of Japanathon as well. Those are limited to 50, and they will not be made after that, but um, I do have some copies available of all of that. Message me on Reddit. At PokeFan, that's a capital P-O-K-E, um, F-A-N, 982-144. Four, four. 
message me on Reddit or message my Instagram page. Um, I always link that in the description. Um, either one of those, if you want any copies of those, hit me up. I'll, I can mind shipping. So, yeah. Once again, Herschel Gillis signing off. Zero brain cells, zero editing, zero planning. I will be back tomorrow with another review. Thanks, everybody.